Study without desire spoils the memory and it retains nothing that it takes in. You have to remember that you have to be intrinsically motivated to pursue a particular field. You have to, driven, you have to be driven by your own curiosity and personal interests when you're starting your learning journey, whether it is robotics, computer vision, machine learning, or in fact, any domain in general. You could start learning for the reasons of earning more money, getting better career opportunities, and stuff like that, which are all nice and important as well. But the primary reason why you should be learning is because you're intrinsically driven, you're curious, and you're excited about the field. You're excited about the possibilities that the field offers. You're excited about the different advancements that are going on. For example, you probably know about the recent launch of chat GPT. So maybe that excites you about natural language processing. But your excitement should not stop there. You should then try to explore, hey, how does chat GPT work, for example? Can I try using it? How accurate is it? What impact do you think that could have? What are the limitations? How, how, does, how can this thing be improved? What are the networks that are being used underneath the technology? And stuff like that. Recently, the Tesla bot, the Tesla humanoid bot was also launched. And that should also excite you. That should excite you, not just from, uh, from the point of view of an external uh, viewer, but from the point of view of someone who is a potential student or a researcher or an engineer in the field of robotics. That should excite you and you should be asking questions. Hey, is this thing really possible? What are the limitations? What are the technologies that are being developed? What is new there in hardware? What is new there in software and so on? And these things can get really overwhelming because as you know that in robotics, machine learning and computer vision, the advances that are going on, the new research papers that are being published, the new technologies that are being introduced and adopted in the industries, they are happening at a very fast pace. So how can you actually leverage that curiosity to benefit your learning journey and so that you can use that curiosity and direct it towards learning these fields in an efficient and engaging way. But before that, you have to make sure that you spend some time identifying what excites you and what, what are the things that you're curious about. And then use that curiosity, leverage that curiosity and make a systematic plan that you can start using to learn the fields of your interest. So here's a small activity for you that you can start doing immediately after watching this video. So this is supposed to be a very short and practical activity that would allow you to define projects based on your own curiosity. So here's how it goes. So first make sure that you take out at least 30 minutes to one hour, maybe more, maybe more, 30 minutes to even 60 minutes or 90 minutes or two hours if you have the time, but make sure that you are not distracted by other things and you are by yourself and have the space to think deeply because you'd be asking yourself questions and brainstorming ideas for your future projects that you'd be using in your overall personalized learning curriculum. So once you, you decide that you want to use your curiosity towards your learning goals and you, you, you set a timer on your phone for 60 minutes, uh, 60 minutes, one hour, 90 minutes, or however much time you can afford to spend. And if this is something that you would just do one time for now. And uh, once you do that, then what you, you should be doing is you should be writing a list of 
questions or of the things that you're curious about, the kinds of things that bother you, the kinds of things that you would like to automate in your home. For instance, one of the major things that bothers me is the trouble of cooking. I really don't like cooking and there's something that I would want to be automated. However, it is a very complicated thing to pursue as a side project because it involves the use of a lot of hardware and it can get really expensive. It involves probably having compute clusters if you want to be training some models, if you want an autonomous system or in any case, it, it is probably impractical to be having a short term project based on this particular uh, problem. But another thing that you could have is you could automate some particular aspect of your work. Maybe you could make a small prototype of a mobile robot, a cleaning robot, for example. And these, these are some of the things that might be driven from your personal curiosity. And these are all fine and well, but you have to also take into account that uh, you should be able to take out projects, to extract projects from the topics that you find out. Okay, so let's be systematic about this. So first of all, you would suspend all your judgment. If you want to make kitchen robots that help you with cooking, just, just write it down. If you want to make a Roomba, just write it down. The things that excite you, if you want to make an app that makes you productive using your image data from the uh, uh, image and video data from your phone camera or your web camera while you're working on your laptop, just write that down. If you want a food delivery drone or something, just write that down. Just, just the idea is you write down all the possible ideas without any judgment. You have to suspend your judgment and we will be evaluating the ideas that we wrote down. But the first step is to just suspend your judgment and be as creative and open as possible and just write down all the things that you could do as potential projects. So after the end of this particular activity, once you have, once you have written down, you would have a list of at least 20 to 30 different projects. Maybe more, maybe less, but it doesn't matter. At the end of it, you would have a list of projects. And then what you would do is you would start arranging the list. You would, first of all, arrange the list based on practicality of implementation. Is it is something like a building, a, like building a mobile robot uh, is it something that you can do within the next year, next two years? Probably not. Remember that the goal of this activity is to help you start learning robotics and also explore different subdomains of robotics and actually do some projects and build a portfolio. It is just a starting point for you to just begin your learning journey. And that is why you should not be Selecting projects that are too enormous, that are too difficult to do, that are impractical to implement uh, based on your monetary status and the time that you have and taking all the other factors into account. So you arrange the list in a descending order of the ease of implementation. So you arranged the list in such a way that the number one project would should be the easiest for you to implement. So maybe it's an image segmentation project that you have. Maybe you want to segment instances of people in, in your family photo. For example, this is something that you think is practical to implement. You don't need to Google search for project ideas. You can find a lot of project ideas and you can watch my video on the top five YouTube channels to consider for finding computer vision projects. 
but for this particular activity i want to i want you to focus on your intrinsic curiosity the things that bother you the things that you could do as projects based on your own real world experience so these should be derived from your experience okay so you have a list of 20 to 30 different projects you have now arranged the projects in the order of difficulty so the easiest project would be on number 1 and the most difficult project would be on number 2 next what would you would do is you would then strike through all the projects that you think are not very practical and maybe you're more excited about those projects for example the kitchen robots one but you know that it's not really possible at this point so you would strike through those projects and then you would select the top 5 projects that you have in that list so after this session you should have a list of 5 projects and the projects should be arranged in an order of difficulty that's it that's the simple activity and the reason for this is because if you're taking up projects based on your own personal interests you're more likely to finish it rather than being given a project by someone else and then you have to think hey yeah i don't know if i have to i, I don't know if i really en would enjoy this project but this is a project that i can do to get started so just leverage your curiosity do this activity let me know what you think about this activity in the comments below and it would be really cool if you can also share your list of the top 5 projects and the order of difficulty in the comments below